Hey, this is Steve Shaw for AcrylicPouring.com, and I'm taking the uh, poured landscape to hopefully to another level. I'm um, just doing some more experimentation with it. As you can see in the background, we started off with this and then went from here to here. And the last painting I did, I'm still just thrilled about this thing. My goal when I started this project was to be able to use pore painting and all the yummy cells and cool stuff that pore painting does, but I wanted to use that to create a landscape that was definitely a landscape, not just something you could like imagine to be a landscape. And to me, this finally hit it. Um, I want to experiment some more, uh, show you guys how I did these trees and maybe try some different things with the trees. I tried a few things last time that did not work. Um, so I'm trying something new today and we'll see if it will work. So let's shift the camera down All Right now we talked a little bit about the rule of thirds before and with the rule of thirds You just don't want to split a canvas right down the middle and today. I'm working on a 10 by 20 inch canvas um just splitting it down the middle sometimes is just not as interesting to your brain as uh, like one-third and two-thirds. Um, there's a lot more on that online you can read about, but it's just kind of a nice thing to do. My plan is to um, have a big, big sky like I did in the last one. And I got some great inspiration from Gina Le, uh, DeLuca, who has her, who has her own uh, channel. And Gina, thank you again. That sky you poured was beautiful. But we're going to try to do a nice, big, beautiful sky and some nice striations of different shades of green down below uh, for the ground. Now, this was what I tried after last week. Um, I put all my color down and actually at one point had a string that I dipped in uh, some black Wanted to do almost like a string pull to create a horizon line because I found out that really a horizon line was what most of these uh, my, my landscapes was missing and that's what it needed to kind of sure it up So I just took some black paint and put a black a line of black paint across here Originally when I did it, it was a lot thicker and had some body to it it has since dried and it's a lot flatter. So this may end up being more of just a reference point. Um, what worked last time is I took uh, some black paint uh, in a uh, condiment kind of ketchup squirt bottle. And once everything was here, um, then I kind of laid down a, a line of black to get that horizon line. So we'll just kind of wing it today and see what happens. Uh, one thing I did do uh, before, which seemed to help, was taking some painter's tape and I'm gonna just kind of mark off what is going to be the ground uh, after I do the sky. And again, I probably don't even really need to do this part, but it's worked for me in the past, so I'm gonna stick with it. There you go. One other thing I'm gonna do, it's a little nerdy, but it's kind of fun. This is actually the same exact cup that I used uh, when I did the big pretty sky in that last pour that I really, really was happy with. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just uh, me being superstitious, but I'm gonna use the same cup again. Um, what I did for the sky that seemed to work, um, I've got, I wanna use mostly white, probably 80% white on here, and I'm gonna end up doing a straight pour. So I'm gonna put a nice layer of white in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of a darker blue just a couple of drips down in there. I think you can kind of see that. Really not much at all. Uh, some more white. This white that I'm using is really thin, so it'll be interesting to see. I do have some water mixed into this. This is the um, Artist Law from Michael's Flow Acrylic. Um, I've got water in here, some flow trawl, and I like to put a few drops of three-in-one three silicone into pretty much all of my, my colors. So in all the colors I use today, like I said, it'll have kind of a mixture of water, silicone, and flow trawl in there. All right, I wanna do uh, some lighter blue. Okay, some more white. And I've got a little bit of this pretty kind of, um, I don't know, lavender maybe that's in here. This is thicker than it should be, but I'm gonna drizzle a little bit in here just to see if that does anything. And one thing that uh, Gina DeLuca did in her video that I thought was kind of cool, she added some silver. So I've got some silver paint here. And the silver, I think, I don't know, added more like a little bit of reflection or something in the sky, but it was really pretty. So I'm gonna 
borrow that idea. Okay. A little bit more white. Like I said, this is at least 80% white. I'm going to put a couple more drips of uh, silicone. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do a little crisscross in here. And then let's see what happens with a straight pour. This is always exciting. All right, let's go. Wow. Wondering if I need, I already might need a little more white in here. The last time we did this at the end, I ended up putting some more, uh, just pouring some white across the top. Although that's really pretty. And we'll do some tilting. Yeah. That's nice. Look at all that in there. That's pretty. Okay, so put my lucky cup to the side. I'm thinking I'm probably going to... Ooh, some nice cells popping up in there. You know what I'm going to do? Even before I tilt... No, tilt first. I'm going to tilt first. All right, here we go. Let's see if this stretches out a little bit. Okay. All right, this is really pretty. Don't get me wrong, but I want... I want some more white in there. So I'm gonna put a line of white just kind of here and there. I guess the white would end up being kind of cloud-like maybe. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. I just love pour painting, you guys. It's just so much fun knowing you can't control everything. That drives some people crazy. I love that part about it. You've maybe heard me say before, it's almost like there's a magic hand in here that's kind of doing the painting for you. Um, yeah, that's pretty. I think it's um pretty enough. I, if I were gonna do that again, I would probably hit it with some more white, but I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time doing that right now. I will hit it with my torch though and see if anything comes out of there. Oh, remember whenever you're using your torch, clear the area out around your pour box. You don't wanna catch stuff on fire. All right, got some little cells popping through. <laughs> Let's see. I'm really tempted to put some more white in there. I can't help it. I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm gonna do this through here. Let's just see what that does. Alright, I'm gonna tilt that. Oh yeah, I'm kind of liking that tilting in there already. Okay, prettier. Um, hopefully you can see up in that sky, really liking that white up in there a lot more. Okay, that's what that's what I needed, that's what I wanted. All right, so now, um, what I did before that seemed to work pretty well, um, well, let me get this tape off first. When I wanted to do the ground, put this in the trash. Yeah, I can see just a hint of that black line, but it's gonna be, I'm gonna need to do the, add something on that. Oh, that's a mess. Okay, um, what I did before, and let's just, I wanna take, I got a brush right here, just for grins, I'm gonna go right down that black, see if I can find that black line that I put on there originally. Got a little bit of it there. Okay, we can see it in there. Uh, my earlier experiments with uh, pouring a landscape uh, did some tilting, but that didn't really get the look that I liked. What I found that I really liked was um, taking my paints, doing kind of a puddle on one side and a line, and then uh, doing a swipe across them. So I've got some nice bright uh, green. All right, gonna do a line and a puddle. Much, 
Oh, medium green. Puddle. Okay, might be a chunk or two. Yeah, I can see a chunk. See if I can get that out of there. Also, right now I'm trying to be careful with. I don't want to drip any green into that beautiful sky. All right, put a little bit of that in there. And then I've got a dark kind of ivy green here, which I think is really pretty. We'll see what that does. Oh, I almost forgot. Where did I put that? I've got a little bit of um, some old metallic green that I just had laying around. So I thinned it out with a little bit of water, a little bit of flow trawl. So let's put some of this in here. This may give it a little, some kind of yummy little spark or reflection in here. Get out of there. All right. Uh, and I'm going to fill in these gaps with the brighter green. Okay, nice. I'm just gonna touch a little bit so I get all those bald spots covered up. I know some people freak out when you touch it. It's okay. It's your painting, you can touch it if you want. Ooh, I'm already digging on that right there. That's pretty with that, I'm really dark with the light green. All right, you guys get up to my horizon line. Cool, all right. I'm going to scooch this back just a little bit. That is already looking nice and landscapish. Um, my favorite swiping tool in the whole world is a paper towel with a spritz bottle. You just put it on there. The weight of the water on the paper towel gives it just enough pressure to hold down and um, so you can drag the paint across. Um, I know a lot of people will use like a metal kind of spatula thing and there's some other tricks i'm sure those all work great for those folks but when i've tried it i've tended to um tend to like scrape too date deep into the paint wow that's pretty right there all right i'm i'm expecting some really good cells here so let's do this all right swipe tilt that way oh that's pretty yeah I'm gonna see if I can get you up in there oh let me hit it with this torch first getting some really cool action happening in here oh wow did you see that it just totally exploded in there love that pretty 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 okay this is a little dark, but you know, it's sometimes it's nice to have an area that's nice and dark in a painting. Uh, it kind of gives it a uh, some contrast. Oh, wow. Oh, man. I'm loving this. All right, let me see if I can lift this up for you. Oh, dripping all over everything. Look at that in there. That. Those are some great cells. Nice kind of, stri I guess, striated kind of lines, but that definitely is looking really good. Okay, so what I want to do now is um, get the horizon line in there, and then I'm gonna try to pull some trees up from it. Um, what's gonna be the best way to do this? Um, I, you know what, I'm gonna just, I know I've already got some stuff happening across here. I'm just gonna touch and drag and see if I can kind of create my own Horizon line there. That's looking kind of cool. Let's do that again. Okay. That's pretty. All right. So what the reason I'm kind of hesitating right now, I'm hesitating because I'm trying to decide if I want to put a line of black or maybe a line of dark brown across there to actually create that line. Um, I did this last week and it worked. You know, sometimes you get here because this is beautiful. I'm loving this, but at the same time, uh, I want to push myself out of my comfort zone a little bit and try some new stuff. So I've just got a but this is burnt umber Americana. Um, I put a little squeeze cap on here, so I think I should be able to um, get a nice line of brown back here if I go nice and hopefully kind of thin and be able to do that to create that horizon line. So, all right, let's just see. 
if we can do it and hopefully it'll be somewhat level where are my marks over here can i still see them there it is all right i got a mark right here and i can see my mark right there let's go Get close over there? No, I came way down over here. Let's add a little bit more through there. All right, I'm okay with that. It's a little thick, a little heavy, but let's drag it through. Okay, now, um, let's do this. I know that's dark. It's darker than I would like it to be, but let's start pulling some of this up. Maybe these can end up being um, tree trunks or something through here. So I'm going to try to get my Bob Ross on and try to make some happy trees. Again, I'm just pulling up. Well, that brown, if I could do that again, I would do much thinner on the brown. I did not expect it to hang out quite that thick, but we can go back and play with it a little bit more too. All right, for me, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is kind of weird for me because with poor painting, I've always tried to be kind of a hands-off artist and let the paint do all the work for me. Um, but with these landscapes, I'm gonna have to work it a little bit more. Man, that brown is too heavy. I'm wondering if I can scrape some of it off. And I did, I think. Okay. All right, I'm trying to see how that's. Ah, uh, yeah, that's looking pretty cool. All right. Um, maybe what I could do. I wonder if I could add a little hint of yellow or something a little bit lighter in there. Or maybe just a little more like that green I had. I've noticed. Let's see. Still loving all this below. Okay. Yep, next time easier on the brown, that's for sure. Live and learn. Alright, I'm gonna go a little bit more with my uh with my trees. Oh, I've got um gosh, I forgot what this one's called. Um this is just a brush though that's got this big kind of um fan end on it. Let's dip into some different shades of green and just see what comes out of that. Alright. Again, landscape, it's an abstract landscape, so just wanting to get, that's kind of pretty. Cool. All right, I'm gonna get in here with some other Shades of green. I'm gonna do some lines coming up and then I'm gonna to try to stretch them out a little bit. All right, let's see what happens. to play with the tree thing here a little bit more I believe and I'm gonna try this thank you for being patient with me you guys I know this is starting to get a little bit long feel free to fast forward if you need to um, but I want to play with this a little bit more You know, 
let that just smoothen that brown out right there. That helped a lot. All right, still need to get some more green in here for these trees. Boom, I gotta figure out a kind of a nice technique that will work when you're doing so much liquid on liquid with these. that yeah this brush it's not even when I touch the uh, the wet on the wet here there's like no paints even coming off of the bristles here so this is not that great a technique so I'm gonna have to work on that some more so one of the things I'm gonna be working on is figuring out how to make better trees when it's so liquefied in these poor paintings but I don't think that's terrible all right I do like the dark down here this is kind of groovy over in that area. So uh, let me see if I can, I'm gonna take a chance of lifting this up, getting a slightly better look at it. But so far, here we go. Um, that's looking pretty cool. I like that we have some light areas and some darker areas. And yeah, all right. So um, for my reference, painting that nice dark black line on there beforehand, did not do a darn thing. So uh, I just need to mark the sides and just know after I put in my nice big blue sky and my earth and the ground down below, then I'm still gonna need to come back uh, with a very thin line of black or brown to create that horizon line across there and then build on top of that. And I need to practice some more to figure out another or better way to uh, make trees, maybe blow on it, some air, something like that, but I'll figure that out. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video and feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you like the content, please hit subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. And pretty much all of my paintings are going to be for sale at my Etsy store. Let's go to Etsy.com and the name of my store is Art by Steve Shaw, all one word. Thanks for watching. Bye.